My liege, I did deny no prisoners. But I, I remember when the fight was done, when I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint, leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord. He was neat and trimly dressed, fresh as the bridegroom. And his chin new reef that shone like a stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and his thumb. He held a poncet box, which ever and anon he gave his nose, and then took it away again. Who there was angry when the next came there, he took it and snuffed. And still he smiled and talked. And as the soldiers bore the dead bodies by, he called them untaught knaves, unmannerly to bring a slovenly, unhandsome course, twixt the wind and his nobility. With many holiday and lady terms, he questioned me amongst the rest. He demanded my prisoners on your majesty's behalf. I then, all smarting with my wounds being cold, be so pestered with a popinjay, <laughs> out of my grief and impatience as neglectingly, I know not what. He should or he should not, for he made me mad to see him shine so brisk and smell so sweet and talk so like a waiting gentlewoman of guns and drums and wounds. God save the mark. <laughs> and telling me the sovereignest thing on earth was parmaceti for an inward bruise. <laughs> and that it was great pity, so it was, that this villainous salt Peter should be digged out of the bowels of the harmless earth, which many a good tall had been destroyed so cowardly. And but for these vile guns, he would himself have been a soldier. This bald, unjointed chat of his, my lord, I answered indirectly as I said. And I beseech you, let not his report come current for an accusation twixt my love and your high majesty. 